Hey guys, we're in East Providence and a lot of progress since our last episode. Today I wanna to walk you through three things. I wanna show you guys some of the details on the white cedar shingle siding. I also wanna show you an up close detail of that gutter that we talked about previously and how we tied in all of the sheet metal flashing from the fascia all the way up to the roof. So first things first. This is a Maybach uh, stained gray shingle. So they're pre-stained, they're stained on all six sides, meaning front, back, top, left, right, bottom. And what we're doing is we're weaving the corners. Sometimes you'll see a corner board. But essentially they're cutting this with a razor blade and then block planing it down to match this corner. and then you're getting a small little stainless nail to keep that corner tight. We have a applicator. As they're installing it, they'll hit this with first coat of stain, and then as they go, we'll come back and put a second coat of stain, so now this edge is protected after we've cut it. Uh, but the woven corners is a really nice traditional detail, and it plays really well with the traditional shingle siding that was on this house. Uh, but we've talked about it before, more modern details, and one of the modern details are these windows. Traditionally, you would have casing and windowsill uh, jams on the window or the window might be proud out. Here we don't. So again, we're mixing the more traditional white cedar shingle install with a more modern detail. Julia's done a great job with this. You'll see this in the finish as well where the ceilings tie in, but here we have our soffit that dies right into the head of our window. So there is no siding above the windows. The window goes all the way up to our soffit detail. Going back to a lot of you guys had asked, oh, are there gonna be any overhangs on this house? You can see the overhang here on the front, we're only about six inches, but then you get that deep pocket at each window bay location. The windows are also set back because of our wall assembly and uh, the additional six inches of exterior insulation we have on this house. And the way we've detailed it is we've actually taken those shingles and returned them back into the window. So acting as the window jam are your white cedar shingles. So when you step back, you still get that that woven corner look, which is a really nice detail. And then calling attention to the custom sheet metal that Mark Jordan had bent up for our window sill. They got powder coated to match the windows. If you look close, there is a gap under there. Uh, we, are, we were waiting on our color matched uh, sealant to get installed there. All, the, all three sides got uh, cock, cocked already with a non-color match. We're just waiting on the color match to do those. Um, also calling attention to our vent. We talked about that in a previous episode on how we were coursing it. Now you can see how this course goes right above it. Uh, we actually have a paint that um, we had a, paint, a local paint store make up and this will get painted to match the shingle, shingle so it's not as obviously flashy on it. Uh, as we walk around here, you can actually see how they're getting prepped for another wall. This is one of the last walls they have to shingle. And one of the details that I like that, that Julia had to focus on is you have the shingle coursing down there, which is roughly about, I think, three or four courses lower than here. And rather than going straight and, and, and dropping straight down, we've actually ramped it down. And we'll go over on the garage and see what this looks like in its final condition. But you can kind of see how they're prepping for it. They basically take that first shingle, and, and, and drop a, a handful of them down and then attach this piece of strapping that they run through a table saw. Why? They run it through the table saw so it's nice and straight. You're not relying on a piece of strapping that may be all over the place. But then they're cutting all of the shingles. They'll figure out what that angle is, cut all the shingles uh, on the same angle and they'll ride this up. And then each course will die in at a, a, a separate point. Before we go to the garage and I'll show you what that looks like in its final condition, this right here, you see all of our um, Slicker HP, all installed. This is a staple up version. It's all prepped. A lot of you guys had talked about how this stuff isn't necessary. That's feedback that we love to get. There's uh, one of you guys said that you've installed both. You've actually ripped off both and saw no signs of moisture. I get it. Uh, we are working with um, some, some technical reps on what makes sense here. Um, and the only downfall that I really heard from some of these comments was that it Oftentimes the shingles are bre break or it's more difficult. Um, and of course, you know, you're adding the cost of adding this barrier. But the fact that the matter is, is this is very similar to um, tar paper being stapled up. Uh, you're just adding that layer for dr dryability on the back. Let's go over to, to the garage side. You're gonna see some areas that we did have to kind of notch around. For example, the door going into the garage here, that shingle course didn't work out. Could we have prevented that? Possibly. Maybe we could have spent more time coursing this on the drawings, but 
you know, ultimately we had a lot of conditions and as you guys know, things change in the field. And we, look, we, we went around and made sure that we were taking advantage of coursing things exactly where they needed to be, where it really did make sense. Uh, you'll see some stuff in the back that didn't course out correctly because as we switch grade, um, that's where stuff ended up. So we, we got a panel up here for our electric uh, meter. This will be where Social Electric mounts their meter. Uh, they basically gave us a height and a width and that will get almost completely covered by the electric panel itself. But here you can start to see the detail of how these angled shingles look. And on this side of the house, the future condition is actually a concrete staircase that will land, will have a, a mid-span landing right here and then continue down to the backyard. So rather than having the siding go all the way you know, flat, you'd, you know, we'd have a ton of exposed concrete or even come halfway and drop. This is a much more gradual approach and honestly a, a detail that I, don't, I haven't seen much, but I, I do like. Looping around, they're working on the back side of here. This is actually what I was talking about. Uh, this is an applicator for as you weave the corners, uh, you have paint you fill up in here and you just take that little foam and you're gonna rub that edge. You're gonna squeeze it and you're gonna rub that edge and make sure that you have a nice coat of stain. Like I said, you come back and put a second coat on anything that need, you know, likely needs a second coat. A couple of the windows don't have the same condition where they're tucked up under the soffit. So you can see here, this copper drip edge is installed. To make sure that water coming down doesn't get trapped into that natural piece of wood here and then back to the window. Though, even though it's, it's uh, completely sealed and cocked, we don't want water traveling backwards. We want to be traveling out and away from the siding. Again, we are now a full story below. Still have the shingle detail. Um, you see how coursing is working out for our window sills. Uh, this is the back elevation. And then as we work our way all the way around, this is our first piece of corner glass that's been installed. Uh, upstairs, we're still waiting on, but you're actually able to see the large format glass without the mullion in the corner and what that detail looks like. Uh, really great detail. I'm, I'm excited to, to, that this one's in and I'll be even more excited, excited when the other one is in. Uh, but while we're looking at it, I'm standing here, you can actually see how narrow uh, that glass buildup is. And you still have that gap that will get filled with a black sealant. Um, but you know, when you're looking at it, you're seeing a corner edge of the glass, not so much uh, a piece of metal. But like I said, there, there will be a small uh, piece of LB on that that will protect the outside glass if, if, if it ever were to get hit. Furthermore, the windows. So upstairs, there's some that were right on the front wall, but oftentimes when you have a wall like this that has a window on it that's short, Julia's went ahead and moved that window all the way over. So now you see that sidewall shingle actually goes right down into the, into the window rather than having you know, that window uh, jet out or having siding that returns in this direction. So when you look out that window, it's actually gonna be quite nice to look, kind of looking down the, that wall. Let's talk about the roof. So the roof, we actually installed an asphalt uh, shingle. Uh, it is a more traditional type of roof. So Julia went with a darker charcoal color asphalt. All the Velux skylights have been flashed in, in my opinion, with the dark gray windows, the dark gray, uh, the black gutters. It's a really nice, you know, continued contrast throughout the whole space. You have the, the light gray working your way up to the dark gray. Speaking of which, why don't we hop up and take a look at that gutter. What we got going on is we have that extruded aluminum gutter here. You guys saw that in a previous episode. And now we have our roof shingles on. Under here, we have this custom piece of drip edge that is installed. This actually clips into the top rib of your extruded aluminum gutter and then goes up the roof and then ties onto the roof and then we'll ice and water on top of that. So that gives you a nice connection from your roof underlayment right into the gutter. So everything is, is, is going into this space. And then from there, Mark actually made a piece that clips into this side and then clips up and over here onto the fascia. And he's got a piece underneath this that is attached to the fascia first. So that way you don't have any of these fasteners on the front nice clean black edge it also protects this leading edge so you guys were asking about the rain if anything were to shoot off and hit you're not hitting constantly the top of your wood fascia board it's more traditional where you're hitting that that aluminum but everything really we've been through a couple storms everything is collecting right into this gutter uh, and then ultimately down the downspout uh, all the way into our drainage system that goes all the way back there into our rain pond so like I said, you know, it was an unfortunate uh, 
circumstance that we could not install the Tesla roof on this project, but ultimately, you know, a black asphalt architectural roof, really simplistic. You know, you have the simple white cedar shingles on this house. You know, ultimately in this neighborhood, it looks really great. It fits in. Uh, and that was a really important uh, detail for Julia is to make sure that this house looked like it belonged in this neighborhood. Um, and I think she's achieved that. So, you know, in the future, uh, there will be probably a discussion about adding panels on the back of this roof and of course the back of the main home uh, because of how big that roof is and the sun that it gets. We want to be able to collect that solar and be able to use that for energy. Guys, appreciate you sticking around. Uh, stay tuned we, as we wrap up the exterior in this home uh, and get this plate and, and get the site in order. We're going to be getting this exterior sh uh, shaped up in a really nice way uh, so we can start focusing on the interior.